Hi, this is Mike Fauché. In today's video, I want to talk about folder provisioning and how it's used in QNAP's ZFS-based QUTS Hero. We'll cover the best practices for provisioning folders and see how snapshots impact your storage space based on whether or not you use thick or thin provisioning. Though I'll be using the TBS H574TX for this demo, this information really applies to all QUTS-based NAS units and other ZFS-based devices. If you want to find out how to maximize your storage, then stick around and watch the rest of this video. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so for other content like this and to help support the channel. As a follow-up to the recent video I did on the QNAP TBS574TX, which runs QUTS Hero, I wanted to better understand how the provisioning choices that we make when we're setting up shares impacts the total storage when snapshots are enabled. Before we start, I did want to thank Daniel at QNAP for providing additional insights on QUTS Hero and ZFS. If you have a QNAP NAS that runs QUTS Hero, you've undoubtedly already created folders for your device. Part of the folder creation process is to decide whether or not you want to use thick or thin provisioning. On the surface, this may seem like a pretty straightforward choice. However, if you add snapshots to the equation, things get a bit more complicated and counterintuitive. So let's first start by understanding the basics and clarify the main difference between thick and thin provisioning, and then see what happens to our storage when we enable snapshots for each of the provisioning types. We'll create some sample folders and see firsthand what happens. In thin provisioning, if you create a one terabyte folder, the operating system will only allocate space if it needs it as you write data to it. For example, if I create a one terabyte folder and copy 100 gigabytes to it, it will only consume the 100 gigabytes on the total storage pool. The advantage of this is that you use storage a lot more efficiently so that more folders can be created without reserving fixed space for each in advance. The disadvantage is that when you increase the amount of data, it will also increase the amount of space used in the pool, which can also affect other folders. So you'll have to monitor your free space a lot more carefully. In addition, thin provisioning can introduce a performance impact depending on your system, controller, and drive performance due to the overhead needed to process real-time changes in space allocation. This can impact the overall performance of your storage system especially under heavy I.O. workloads. We'll run a quick test to see if we can capture this, though I suspect in a traditional home and small business application, it shouldn't be a real issue. With thick provisioning, space is pre-allocated when you create the folder. There are some advantages in thick provisioning as storage space is fully allocated up front. Because of this, there's no overhead penalty for real-time changes in your storage allocation, as well as minimizing any fragmentation. Thick provisioning can also avoid overcommitting of your storage as you can with thin provisioning. Overall, thick provisioning may seem like an attractive option, especially in high I.O. applications such as databases, but as we see later, there is a catch. Now that we understand the basic differences, what do we do as home users when it comes to provisioning folders to our NAS devices to maximize our storage and gain the most flexibility? There's also considerations when using QUTS Hero and ZFS and using snapshots, as the behavior between thick and thin is quite different when it comes to snapshots. To illustrate what happens, let's create two folders, one thick and one thin, and see what happens to our storage, and then create snapshots to see how snapshots impacts our overall storage. Looking at the overview of my storage, you can see that my allocated space is slightly over a terabyte and 2.4 terabytes of unallocated free space. Looking at the folders I created, we can see how they are allocated. And again, looking at the breakdown of the data, we see the summary that is on the overview screen. Going to the file manager, I want to create a new shared folder. Let's give it a name and then select thin provisioning. For purposes of this video, I'm going to disable the schedule and set the capacity to 500 gigabytes. Clicking next, we're warned that thin provisioning does not support guaranteed snapshot space. We'll leave the rest of the default settings and set the right permissions. On the last screen, I'll disable previous versions and the recycle bin just so that we can see the data only. Click on finish to complete the folder creation. Now that we've created the folder, let's verify that the total storage didn't change and then copy about 200 gigs of data to the folder. 
If we look at the summary, we can now see that our allocated space is 1.2 terabytes versus the original 1 terabyte, and our unallocated space is 2.2 terabytes versus the original 2.4 terabytes before we copy the data. So far, everything's doing what we expect it to do. Now let's create a snapshot of this folder. Clicking on the snapshot icon launches the snapshot manager. We can close the information screen and click on Take Snapshot button to create our first snapshot. Click OK on the first screen and it'll create the snapshot. Going back to the summary screen, we can see that the storage hasn't changed. As snapshots are mostly metadata, very little storage is used when they're created. Even creating a second snapshot didn't show a change in our initial storage, which may not be exactly what you would have expected. Now let's delete this shared folder and see what happens if we do the same thing using a thick provision folder. Let's verify that the storage has been regained after deleting the previous folder and looking at the summary screen we see that everything has been returned to our starting point. Let's go to the file manager and create a new shared folder again. Give it a name but this time we'll pick thick provisioning. Give it the same capacity of 500 gigabytes. And so we can expect the same impact to the storage will zero out the guaranteed snapshot space. Leave the rest at default and set the right permissions. As we did in the previous example, I'll disable the previous versions and the recycle bin and click on finish. Going back to the storage summary screen, we can see that the allocated space has gone to 1.5 terabytes. This is because it's pre-allocated all 500 gigabytes up front, so you have the original 1 terabyte plus the new 500 gigabyte thick provision folder we just created. Our unallocated space has been reduced to 1.9 terabyte. Looking at the storage allocation, we see the same result. As we did in the thin provisioning example, I'll copy approximately 200 gigs of data to this new folder, and looking at the summary screen, we can see that since the data was already allocated when the folder was created, nothing's changed and we still have the same 1.5 terabytes of allocated space and 1.9 terabyte of unallocated space. For the last part of this comparison, let's do a snapshot of a thick provision folder and see what happens to our storage. Going through the same steps, let's create a snapshot and now let's go back to the summary screen. Looking at the summary, we see a different story. Interestingly, our space allocation has gone up to 1.7 terabytes and our unallocated space has been decreased to 1.7 terabytes accordingly. To understand why it's doing this, we need to know a couple things. First off, since we pre-allocated the space by creating a thick provision, snapshots will be additive. In other words, it won't use the space that's in the thick provision, it'll use part of your free space. Second and most important, thick shares have an overwrite protection reserve space as part of the operating system for snapshots that's built into QUTS Hero. This automatically allocates reserve space equal to the amount of data that you copy in. Looking at this example, we copy 200 gigs of data to this folder and the system automatically reserved an additional 200 gigabytes of space outside the folder when we took our snapshot, even though snapshots are extremely small and mostly metadata. Taking snapshots then effectively doubles the allocated space needed for data. It used 200 gigs on the inside of the folder and an additional 200 gigs of free space. As this is a built-in feature, it cannot be changed nor can it even be seen in the UI. This is a separate feature and is different than the guaranteed snapshot space that you create when you set up your folder. With thin provisioning, the system does not pre-allocate any space and you only uses the minimal amount of space needed for the snapshot metadata, hence uses much less space overall than a thick provision. Just to see if there's any difference in performance under normal use, let's do a quick comparison benchmark between thick and thin to see if we're giving up anything. This isn't meant to be a real scientific test, but as you can see from the quick test, there was little to no impact that could be measured during these two tests, and both were able to saturate my 10 gigabit connection to my NAS. If there is a performance impact, it won't really be noticeable until you're able to push much higher bandwidth than 10 gigabit, or if you have an extremely heavy I.O. application, such as a database. So in summary, what did we learn today? What should you do in your own particular setup? There's always a lot of factors in determining what type of provisioning you should use, and there are special use cases for using each one. However, based on general purpose uses, my recommendation is always to use thin provisioning. This is especially true if you want to create a lot of folders, as it will typically conserve a lot of space. 
This is critical when you are limited on storage, such as either a two drive or four drive storage unit, or if you're using an all flash storage like I am. Overall, thin provisioning drastically conserves on space, and under most conditions, it won't noticeably impact speed, especially if you're using SSDs or have some kind of caching enabled. If you have a special application, such as possibly a huge photo library, or if you're not going to use snapshots at all, then you can always create a thick provisioning folder for that specific use case. Just remember that if you're using thick provisioning with snapshots, you'll double the storage requirements for your data. Also, you can change your provisioning type at any time. So if you've created a thick provision folder, you can always change it to a thin provision folder at any time, even if there's data in it. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, and I hope that you found it useful. Again, a special thanks to Daniel at QNAP for the insight, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.